Joined by head coach Mike Clark of the Bridgewater College Eagles football team. They were picked number five in this year's preseason poll. Coach, when we take a look at things uh, going from last season into this season, give me a general state of the Eagles right now coming into preseason uh, camp. Well, I think uh, we're really kind of an open book. Uh, I, I think we've got enough cards in the deck that, that you could be a dangerous person to sit at the table with, but by the same token, you, we, we've got a lot of uh, gaps we have to fill. Uh, I do think any time you're having to start from ground zero at the quarterback position again, you know, that always – it's always going to be a, a precarious, put you in a precarious position. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a bad position because we are going to, the battle that we're going to have is going to be among talented kids, but none of them have played. And I do think this, uh, we could go in a lot of different directions. Uh, I think it'll be a unique year for us in many respects. I mean, I've been picked a lot lower. I've been picked a lot higher. And if I've learned anything in this business, you know, and being in this, in this league, uh, you got to manage problems at both ends of the parade, and, and I, we've been able to do that. Uh, I do think, uh, you know, football is still important to the right people, you know, at Bridgewater, and, and I think we, we still have a tradition that we hold ourselves accountable to. You kind of led into the first topic we're going to talk about here, and it's one that a couple teams have to talk about in the conference, or at least make decisions on, is the quarterback position. You graduated a dual-threat quarterback. You could run, you could throw. What do you see overall from your quarterback position, and who are the guys that are going to be in that battle this year? Well, you know, we're going to have three kids that are going to get work here in the spring. Uh, Matt Pisarczyk and Ross Russing went through our spring program. Kenner Berry was a baseball player and you know, was involved in the long run that our baseball team had and really didn't get to do anything with us in the spring. But I, th I think very quickly in the two weeks in camp, uh, those are going to be the people that get the look. Uh, they're people that have good arms. Uh, we're going to force them to move their feet enough to at least pester a defense. Uh, I think that that's critical. You need to do it uh, the way offenses are based and the way defenses are based in this air. But, but I do think this, uh, they're talented kids, but they're also kids that haven't played on a Saturday when it mattered. And that's a tough thing to evaluate. Uh, it's a position and it's a business where experience matters at that position. And But we don't have it. It's a given, and we're going to have to work around it. Obviously, everything would be important to, to a new quarterback, but two of the quarterback's best friends, even a new quarterback, would be guys back on the offensive line. You have a couple returning there, and then running backs that can keep the people out of the box or bring some people out, uh, into the box and allow the receivers to get open a little bit more to make it easier passing angles. You have at least one of those running backs with Jacob Wright, who had a nice season last year. Talk a little bit about him and what else you see from your offensive rushing side of the ball. Well, I think we have to push Jacob Wright. I mean, Jacob Wright's a gifted player. I mean, he works very hard, but, you know, he has to become more than an 800-yard a year rusher, which he's been, you know, his previous two years. Uh, I think that it isn't just about Jacob, you know, it's about the people that we put around him. Uh, I think we have issues in the offensive line. You know, the cliff note version of, of last year, which was a year that got away from us, is we lost control of the line of scrimmage, really on both sides of the ball. Um, I mean, Regardless of what you have on the perimeter, you know, if you can't control those areas, you never look as fast and you're never as productive. So it's a, from an offensive point of view, it's a major rebuilding effort of a wheel that wasn't going 85, you know, last year down the stretch. So we've got our work ahead of us, but we're doing it with talented kids. I think we have receivers, big receivers on the outside that can run in a league that, is based on a lot of athletic but smaller secondary people. I think we do have some matchup issues. And the one thing I'd say about the kids, whoever we choose at the quarterback position, you know, he's going to be able to set his feet in, in a pocket and be a threat anywhere on the field with his arm. And at least on paper, that's good. But you also have to put the pads and get the live bullets flying around them. And we, we don't get that opportunity in Division Three in the offseason. Let's switch to the defensive side of the ball. And you talked about secondary there. You've got your full secondary back. And I'm sure you've got other players that are waiting in the wings to step up and or push those players for some time. Talk about the importance of having that a full unit back that you don't necessarily have to spend a whole lot of time teaching new things, but more refinement and things like that. Well, I think we have to teach. There's no question about that. But, you, know, you have the whole unit back from a four and six team. But, but I do think bringing those guys back, when you have your umbrella back in the secondary, um, 
No question. I think uh, the, one of the biggest variables next to turnovers on who wins and loses football games is explosion plays. It's who can get big plays, who can get the fast strikes and, and the fast points. And, and when you're secure in the umbrella, uh, it allows you to pressure a little bit more up front. And uh, hopefully we have people that will tackle and, and deny, make offenses earn it. Uh, the average offense, if you give them enough chances, are liable to screw it up themselves. And I, I do think that will help us, but we're going to need that because we're going to take a, a base and an interior that's going to be thin. And it's going to be young, much like our offense will be on the offensive side of the ball. And we're going to have to uh, secure a line of scrimmage because, you know, if you're not careful, um, you know, we saw it in game 10, you know, a year ago when we played Catholic, uh, you can get beat badly four yards at a time if you're not careful. And I think we've got a lot of challenges ahead of us. Uh, I think it's, it's a unique situation for Bridgewater, but I do think our kids are looking forward to the challenge. Uh, we've got a new beautiful facility we're going to move into by Division Three standards. And though you don't win games with nice locker rooms and training rooms and weight rooms, they help. Uh, and my hope is that that kind of sets a tempo and gives, gives us the buzz. Um, I still walk to work, but I'm walking to work to a new job. Yeah, I, and I think that's where I was going to go next is you do have that new facility coming in. And you said it helps, and it helps in some of those intangible ways that you can't really see. What does that do to a team? And the buzz is a great word there for that. What does that do to a team on game day when they get to walk into a place like that? Well, I don't know. It's a, nothing else. I'll have the nicest visiting facility for a, a team that, that travels in the ODAC. But, but I think – it's more so on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the, the people get the understanding that these kids are Division three athletes. Hey, during the fall, they put in the same amount of time that Virginia Tech athletes put in. Um, and the idea being that the kids that you recruited, I mean, you, you put them in a position where they can walk in and walk into a place that has value, that's new, that's neat, that's clean, that's functional, and, and, you're, and you're not asking them to work in an environment that they look around and say, gosh, th this involves a lot of sagging. Mm -hmm. This involves me to turn my eye on a bunch of things. So as I mentioned earlier, it's not going to win a game for you, but it certainly makes going to work a lot easier. And, and my hope is, is there'll be some great new celebrations in that facility too. And let's talk about celebrations when we look at a conference view. Bridgewater has some experience of going deep in the national tournament. It, uh, undoubtedly, obviously, several years ago, but we so start to see some things coming with the national tournament for the conference again over the last several years. Washington Lee at Hobart a couple of years ago, and then what Hampton Sydney did last year, getting winning a game at their place and then taking the then number two team, leading at the half by a lot and just you know kind of uh, having a little bit of an issue there in the second half and losing that game, but showing that they could play on a national stage. When you look at it from a conference perspective, just about everybody played with that Hampton Sydney squad or played with somebody they played against and can turn things over. So it kind of shows that everybody in the conference is pretty comparable. Talk a little bit about that, what you see coming into this year as well. Well, I think we've got a great conference. So I'll never be confused with being a Hampton Sydney fan. I'm not, but, but certainly I respect them. And, and, I, and I cheered for them a year ago. I think, you know, us winning a playoff game, which we hadn't done in about six years, was important. Uh, I think what they were able to do on the road uh, against a very good football team uh, was important to the conference. And I, I do think that, you know, Don Montgomery that was with us a number of years, uh, whose son always coached in the OAC. They spent a lot of time together. I remember one time Don and I talked, and he said, Mike, I watch all the film of the teams my son plays, and they're us. You know, pull Mount Union out of the equation in the OAC. And, and I do think that's important. Uh, I'm grateful that the Tigers were able to do that for us all, and, and now we have to back it up. Now, as you saw, I mean, hey, Shenandoah won two games in the conference last year. They beat us and Hampton Sydney, which are two teams that they haven't done very well against traditionally. And, and, and I think that gives you an idea of the balance. Uh, I said a year ago, I still believe it. It's a poor man's NFL. Uh, you don't get a lot of days off. And the team that's going to be able to walk away with a championship team and not just say I'm a competitive team is going to be the team that stays healthy and we don't control that. But there, it's also going to be the team that has the disciplined and the ability to show up for seven straight weeks once the conference schedule starts and be ready to play. That's what it's going to take to get through this thing. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for joining us today. Good luck this season. Thank you.